Hey everybody, Eric here. And today we're gonna to take a deep dive into Layout's auto text feature to see how you can speed up your workflow. So if you've used auto text before in Layout, then you know how helpful it is, especially when it comes to setting up templates. So I know that there are some things, if you've never used it before, can be tricky, can be intimidating. So that's why we're doing this. We're gonna go through each kind of and every one and show not just how auto text works, but why we might wanna use it, and of course, how it helps your workflow. So with that, let's get into it. I've got a little document here. I'm gonna come back to this because I'm gonna start at the very beginning. Like they say in Sound of Music, pretty good place to start. I've got this kind of basic document purposefully set up because I just wanted to go through the text by itself and then I want to apply it to something. So I've got two columns here or uh, two blocks of text. One of them has some text in some brackets and these little brackets means that if you see these little arrows or carrots, it means that anything within that is gonna tell you what text is gonna be substituted. So you can think about this like almost like a placeholder text. So if you write date modified in this case, and you have these little carrots, it's going to give you the date that this document is modified. In this case, it's just showing today because I'm just working on this document today. Now I put a little gap right here on purpose because if I delete that gap, of course the auto text kicks in and I wanted to give myself sort of a reminder of not only what the auto text is, but also what it does. So this one here is when the auto text has been essentially enabled. And then this little um, cheat sheet off to my left tells me what does the text, what text do you need to input in order for it to, um, to turn into auto text? So before we get into each of those, I wanna show you where you can learn a little bit more about auto text. So come up to file, document setup. Now it's not in preferences. And I say that because auto text, some things seem global, but the reality is, is that it's per document. So it's very specific to this document. Um, that's why I say that's kind of cool because if you save it to a template, you can, every time you open up this template file, you get all of those global settings. So think about it like that. Auto text is here. There are some settings that you can change if you want. You can add, um, there's a couple of parameters to add. I know sequencing is kind of a new feature. So to make sure that you can kind of see how to add a sequence, but I'm gonna stop there. I'm not gonna go through it here because we're gonna go through it on the page. Just that's where you can find it. Document setup, auto text, there you go. So. Let's look at these one by one really quick. File name, pretty straightforward. Untitled, it's because this is a brand new file. I have not saved it. So let's save this and I'm gonna call it something. Let's put save it to my desktop and I'm gonna call this, I don't know, we're gonna call this auto text. Demo, right? Call it what it is. Now what happens is you can see automatically it changes. We are now auto text demo. So if I save this as version one, version two, revised, today's date, whatever, it's going to put that into the file name. So the address, the address is global. So that is a global setting. Um, so if you go into document setup, uh, if you come to auto text address, it gives you a chance to put in the address. So if I wanted to put in Trimble's address, uh, which is in Colorado, I'm just going to type Colorado. I'm not going to type in the full address because you get it. And then I hit, let's see, uh, let's close that you can see Trimble's address in Colorado replace it. So you would put the numbers in there. Author name, same thing here, author name, company name. Some of these things are driven by this sort of document settings. So if I wanted to put replace author name with my name, and if I knew I was the only one working on the documents, then I'd probably just go ahead and change it this one time and it would show up every time I create a document, my name would be there. So same thing for company name. In this case, I could say Trimble Sketch Up. And then every time I work on a document, anytime I use the company auto text, it will just automatically pull from, pull from that. So there we go. You can see those replaced. I'm now the author of this document. Anytime I put the words author, I show up. Trimble SketchUp, today's date, the date that it was created, the date that it was modified. Now the date that it was published shows unpublished because I haven't exported it yet. So if I export this and I come over here and call this auto text demo, and just make that a PDF, looks good. Let's save that. There it is, close it. And you can see right now, date published today. So same thing, date published, that's today. So page count. Right now I only have one page. So if I come over here and add a couple pages, I can go page, 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 go back to the top page, you can see page count automatically updated. 
it's we have six pages it's right page name page one if i change the name over here on the right under the pages panel i'm going to call this the auto text template you can see page name changes to auto text template it is now referencing the name of the page and of course this is the page number this page number is one so if i moved this to page two then this one should update but it also depends on where you want the, the sequence the numbering to start from so let me go check that really quick so here this one's a little bit tricky i moved it so it should be saying that page one is actually page two now but you can see that i by default it said start page was at page one but i just moved page one so you may have to actually switch that in this case i want to start page page two because i reordered that so when i click close now all of a sudden i get page number two that's correct and then the last thing is a number sequence, which I'm going to show you actually in a template file that I've set up because the number sequence is a really cool thing if you're doing bullets or if you're doing things like a table of contents. All right, so let's look at how I apply this in sort of a template page. I've got sort of a basic page set up here. You can see it's an elevation. Uh, you can see there's a few things. I actually have here a template page that has that same text that I just kind of started with and then i just put it where it actually goes in the document and then i have my plan view and i have some elevations so let's go back to where should we start let's go back to the plan view what's interesting about the plan view is a couple of things number one is you can see here that i have page name showing as the page name so if i did change this to site plan view i don't know maybe that's a better name for this or floor plan, floor one, then it automatically updates. If we zoom into this corner, just double checking this, you can see the file name. I've already saved this as ADU concept and my company has already been filled out as Trimble SketchUp, as you would expect. Coming over to the right, today's date, automatic, page number. This is page two of, and then page count, which is page two of eight. So that's pretty cool. All that stuff is automated for me. So here's where I was kind of referencing why I was going to go look at sequencing, um, but I felt like it's better to see it in a sequence. In this case, I've got this bulleted list or I've got this um, call out list that I want to go take these, these items, these numbers, and go and put them, say, on my plan. So here in this case, you can see if I double click on this, there's A, it's just A. And if I double click in this one, here it's A. So it's the same basically little number the little cheat sheet that we use so if i grab let's grab some new text here and i'm just going to use brackets or carrots a and carrots you can see that it automatically becomes the last number in the sequence now because i have multiple legends that carry all the way through or these don't renumber on each page they could if they wanted if i wanted them to um, if i wanted to just reset that number per page i could just come over here to sequence and i could say instead of per document per page and that way those numbers actually reset so you don't get something like number 21 at the end of list six. I'm gonna close that and you can see that one is in the sequence. If I copy that one more time, I get eight. Copy that one more time, I get nine. Pretty cool way to quickly order some things in your document. So that's that sequence. So I pretty much covered everything. You can see that we're pulling, we're referencing page names, we're referencing file names, we're referencing the date from your computer from the time that you've either worked on it or saved it. There's one more thing with auto text that I want to show though, and it's a little bit, um, it's not really auto text as much. It's auto text being driven from the model. So right now, everything I've been talking about is just text and layout. But for example, if I come over here with the label tool and I'm going to check this toilet, I don't know. I haven't actually tried this to see if the toilet's been named properly, probably hasn't. So let's do a different one. I'm going to do that one. Let's do this one. Let's do this tub. So I'm going to come over here. And if I just click a label here on this tub, and then what it's going to do, it's going to ask me a couple things. You can see this is auto text right here, component definition. And the definition, I get to choose it from a few different things. I can choose whether I want it to be the viewport. So I could actually pull the name of the viewport that this sits in. It's viewport plan view. So I don't think that really is helpful very much. I can pull the scene description, which if I had a scene description, I can pull the scale, which I've already done over here. I can also pull from it the 
um, component definition, the name of the component. So if this bathtub model number or model name was Wessex, which is kind of a funny name for a bathtub, I can pull that or I can pull some other information, coordinates, sizes, there's all kinds of information that I can actually pull from the component definition itself. So I actually want to go with this one, component definition, and that auto text will autofill. If I just exit out of there, you can see Wessex. It automatically did that. I've also used it to pull the scale from this viewport, which is 3 8 inch equals one foot. So a lot more you can do with auto text when it comes to interacting with the SketchUp model beyond just the things that you can do that we've already done with placing text, placeholder text in our page and pulling the information from our document. So that's it. That's my brief primer on auto text. We pretty much covered everything, which is where to find auto text settings. That's up in file document setup, which auto text settings maybe need um, some pre-population. So things that you want, you want consistency throughout like author and company name. Those are things you can kind of pre-fill. And then some of the other things that just pull straight from the document, page name, page number, all that stuff. It's pulling straight from the document as you create the document. So it's really cool. All that stuff together, you can see if you browse the templates, if you go and open a new template, a lot of those templates that come with layout, they already have auto text in them. So at the very least, I encourage you to go in there and play around and check out how those templates use auto text and get some ideas in addition to the ones that I shared here. So I'm going to leave you there. I'm going to say thanks as always for watching. While you're here, give us a comment. Let us know, did I miss anything? Is there a feature with auto text that you use that I didn't cover? Let's keep that conversation going on there. And while you're at it, give us that thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed so you get notifications of all the videos that come out every single week. And with that, I'm gonna say thank you all and see you next time.